Weird flex, but okay. All right, welcome back to the channel. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make this the premier resource, the top resource for software engineering prep. We've only done maybe 29 or 30 videos of like 250 videos that I want to get done. So you're going to need to know so many things for the interview and it's like all these subjects. So that's why this is going to take time to build up this library of videos. So subscribe, stick with me. I think in a year we're eventually going to complete this project. Anyway, today we have a fascinating stack question. Let's get straight into it right now. All right, so today we're gonna talk about the topic stack with dot max. So whenever we say API, I think of like web APIs. I used to think an API is like when we're interfacing with a web service or something. So an API is called application programming interface. All it is, is a strict set of functions or properties, behaviors, we define from a certain system or a certain underneath set of logic that is going to provide us a certain behavior and this sets us the fundamental basis for what is called an abstract data type, an ADT. So a stack is an abstract data type. So what does that mean? It means we support an interface to the outside world. We say, hey, I'm going to give you these behaviors. I'm going to give you these properties. You don't need to know how I do this. It's, you're interfacing with me. I don't need to tell you how I'm doing it. I'll do these things for you. It's like we're signing a, this is why they call it a contract. An interface is a contract. We say, I'm going to give you these services. Don't worry about how I do them. Just accept that I'll provide these to you in the way that I describe. So it's like if you hire an electrician, you don't worry about how he's fixing your um, lights. You just worry that he's going to fix your lights. You worry about the results, the end behavior, and not how it's done. A stack. It's an abstract data type. We can implement it however we want, but what it needs to support is two principal operations. The push operation and the pop operation. Both of these operations operate in constant time. No matter what the size of the stack is, I know that what is going to happen is as input gets arbitrarily large or the size is arbitrarily large, the time of pushing an item, the time it takes to pop an item is not going to scale. It's going to stay in a constant fashion. It's going to stay constant. So we need to support push and pop. So that makes sense. A stack is LIFO, last in first out, but this question says implement a max API. That seems odd. So now we need a max function. We need a function that gives us the maximum item in a stack. So that's, that's an odd question to ask because a stack isn't really made for that. And we would never even think this to appear on a stack. But the whole point of this is to test how you think, test how you can work around these limitations that a stack gives us with this push and pop behavior. Now let's see the problem we run into. And as always, I want to walk you through the thought process, the intuitions, the, the way that my brain goes solving this, and then we'll slowly snake into the optimal solution. Now let's start with the problem that a stack provides us with this question. Whenever we are tackling these questions, the key is figure out the problem before we even can figure out a solution. So we need to see the barriers that our brain hits, that we hit in this question, that our structure limits us with, before we even can solve it and continue with a solution. I've given us a set of numbers that we're going to push, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep track of the maximum. And what I want you to notice is the problem that we face. So here's our strategy. We're going to figure out as we go along. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push one. So let's push one. Does one beat our maximum? It initializes with like negative infinity. So does one beat our maximum? So we have nothing. So one becomes the max. Okay, that's cool. So now let's push two. So two gets pushed. Does two beat the maximum? Of course it does. So now we put two as the maximum and push two. All right, great. So now let's push three. Does three beat the maximum? Yes, it does. All right, and now we push two. Does two beat the maximum? No, it does not. We push the two. We did not change our max. Our max is still three. So right now, as it is, if a caller was like, hey, I want the maximum from you, Stack, we have no problem returning it in constant time. We have it. We know that. Now let's push the zero. Does zero beat three? No, it doesn't. Just push it. Okay? So our max is still three. That makes sense. And of course, it is true. We can see it is true. So now push the four. And we notice that our max changed. Four is the new maximum. So everything is going right. And we're doing fine. Constant time access, bang, we have the maximum. Our stack is behaving normally. 
But the problem happens when we try to pop an item. So let me pop the 4. So when we pop the 4, I realized 4 was my maximum. So we need to adjust our maximum. Let's do that. But wait, th this is a stack. We, we can't adjust our maximum because we don't know what the maximum is at this point in this state. We don't know what the maximum was at this point. We lost it. We overwrote the maximum. Because we overwrote it, we lose access when we pop this item. So now we know our problem. We have our problem. So what is the solution to this problem? Did you just notice me saying state? Do you notice how we overwrote a state? So the next mental leap I need you to make or that you would make in an interview solving this is you would say, hey, I need to cache the maximum at each of these states. At each of the pushes, I'm going to see what was the maximum element. Does this item beat the maximum? And I'm going to remember at every element what the maximum was. So when I pop at this point, the zero needs to remember, hey, three was the maximum. The two needs to remember, three was the maximum. Three needs to remember, well, three itself is the maximum. So two needs to remember that two is the maximum. And one needs to remember that one is the maximum. Now let's do this new approach. And again, remember the problem is when we pop this, we would have to do a linear time search. Then our max operation is not constant time. Our max must be constant time. It cannot be linear in time. We cannot search this in a linear fashion. And it's a stack. We would have to search it linearly. We can't do any binary searches or anything because it's not sorted. What we need to do is reapproach this and cache our states. So let's do that. So we're back to our example, and what we're gonna do is, on every node, I want to cache the maximum up to myself, including myself, that the stack has. So if someone requests me the maximum, hey, I know the maximum, I've cached that state, I already know what it was. So what we do is, let's do our normal pushes. So we push one, we see we don't have a maximum. One becomes a new maximum, and one remembers that one is the maximum in the stack so far. Okay, cool. So do you see this entry? We have the normal one, and then we see that one was the maximum. So now we've completed that. So now we push the two. Does, oh, I forgot to update the max by that. So now let's push the two. Does two beat the maximum? Yes, two does beat the maximum, and two is going to remember what the maximum was. It's itself, it just beat the maximum. So let's update our state. Okay, so now everything's going okay. So if I pop this two, then if I'm at this state, I know that one is the maximum. So let's continue. So now let's push three. Does three beat the max? Yes, and three is gonna remember the maximum, which is itself. All right, so now we are at the two. So let's push the two. Does two beat the maximum? Two does not beat the maximum three. But what we do know is that we're going to cache this three. We're going to know that the maximum, when this item was pushed, when this item was pushed, the maximum is three. So we're gonna push the two and remember that. And now let's push the zero. Again, it does not beat the maximum, but we need to remember that our max below us is three. So what we do is push the zero. And now we see four, four beats the maximum. So we can push four and it's our new maximum. It remembers itself as the max. So four, push. So now I want you to see how this solves the problem that we ran into. Do you see how we're taking little jumps in our approach because we found our problem, we gave it a little solution. This is not the optimal solution in terms of space. In terms of time, yes, but not in terms of space. So we can pop this four. So my caller says, I want the top item. Give me the top item. What's great is, what's the max? The max is three. I know, I remember it. I remember it and I did not lose it. So I mean, we won't even need this because we're going to remember this on the stack. That was just for example's sake. But we're going to remember this. So what we do is, we can pop again. And again, we're not lost anymore constant time access, we remember it. What is the max in the stack? It's three. What is the max in the stack? It's two. What is the max in the stack? It is one. This is a very good solution. This is going to use linear space and linear time. Linear space is because for each of these nodes, we're going to have to annotate with the maximum, and that entails extra space. So we know our worst case space is going to be O of N, but let me wonder, can I improve the best case space? When am I going to be able to optimize space? This is going to lead us into our optimal solution. So what we do is as follows. Let me show you an example and then explain the intuition behind it. Okay, so the optimal solution for this problem is going to be where we keep track 
of two stacks. So this is going to be our item stack, our actual value stack, and this is going to be our maximum stack, our cache of the maximums. All right, so now we have two stacks. So wait, why did I just make another stack? So did you notice how when we did that, we repeated three, we cached the three, we cached the three, we cached the three. The problem is if I add an item like zero, it will not be three, it has no chance. So the thing is we're going to be caching the same maximum on these nodes when they never had a chance to even beat the maximum. So why not create a separate cache where I can say I've seen the maximum three three times if I pop a three I remove that maximum of three and then I have seen three two times so let's do a walkthrough this will not do you need to see this pictorially verbally it's not going to make sense so let's do this walkthrough very quickly all right so I have switched up the numbers so that uh, we can actually see why this improves our space and why this is more optimal. So what we're going to do is we're going to push two. We don't have a maximum yet in our max cache, so two is going to get an entry in the maximum cache, and two is just gonna be pushed to the actual stack. So now we've pushed two to the actual items, and we've created a cache entry for this item in our max stack. So we've seen the maximum two one time, one occurrence of the maximum two. So now we're going to push another two. And the reason this approach helps us is because we don't want to cache two as a maximum again. We can just keep the occurrences over here. So what we do is we're going to add the two and then we're going to increment this amount because this is already the maximum. So this is going to become two and we're going to push that two. Okay, so now this is the actual stack and this is the max stack. So when we push the one, we're going to peak the top of the max cache and we see that it does not be two. So we're not even going to keep track of another two on this one we're about to push. It will not even have a chance to be to beat the maximum. So we just push the one and we don't even create an entry for it in the max cache. Do you notice how if a max operation was called, we would have constant time access to the maximum, but the thing is, this one contributes nothing to this. So the one does not even influence this. So, so far we're fine. So what we need to do now is push the four. Four is going to be a maximum because it beats this entry. So we're going to create an entry for four and push it to the stack. Okay, so we pushed four and now we, again, we know four is our maximum. If we peak the max cache, we're going to have our maximum item in constant time. So now we push a five. We see five is a new maximum, push it to the stack, create a new cache entry. Okay, we created a cache entry. And again, we see another five. So all we do is we increment the amount of occurrences of the maximum five. So now we see that this becomes two and we push another five. And so now we push the three, we see it doesn't beat the peaked maximum, the maximum at the top. So we just push three, it contributes nothing. And so now we're going to see what happens on pop. So I know that this is the maximum. Five is the maximum so far. So pop three. Is three in our max cache? No, it's not. We do not need to adjust this. Just pop the three. All right, is five in our max cache? Is it the top entry? Yes, it is. Decrement the two. We only have one occurrence of five as a max now and pop the five. Okay, and now if we pop this five again, we need to decrement the one and we're going to do that now. After we do that, we notice that five does not have any more max entries. So five gets popped off of the max cache. So now again, if we were asked the maximum, we have the answer four and that's correct. So what we do now is we're going to pop four. We are going to decrement the amount of occurrences of that in the max cache and that's what's gonna happen. So now we have zero occurrences of the four. After doing that pop, we notice that, so we pop this off of the max cache. And again, constant time access to the maximum item, it's two, that's correct. Pop the one. Is the one going to be influencing this? No, it's not, because it doesn't even have an entry at the top. So just pop the one. So now we see a two, and we know that's going to influence the max cache if it's popped. This is going to decrement and will pop. And now finally, we pop the two, we see it influences this, this becomes zero, this gets popped. And after doing that popping, we need to pop this item because it has no more occurrences. So this is the approach that improves our best case space. So as always, I want to ask myself why? Why does this improve our best case space? Before it was O of N, every element would have to hold an item. There, we saw that it was roughly better, but here is a case that really exemplifies why this approach is the best. So let me push five and we see it's a new max entry. And now let me push zero. We see that it does not influence the max cache. Now let me push zero. Now let me push zero. Again, it's not influencing our max cache. Now let me push zero. And again, let me push zero. 
And one more time, let me push zero. Do you notice that as our input can get arbitrarily large, you give me 10 million zeros, the space is going to stay constant. We are not going to scale the amount of space we use. This is our best case. If we get many items that do not influence this cache, do you see why this approach is better? Instead of caching a five on all of these zeros, what we're going to do is, that's it. That's our maximum right there. Our best case for space can now be constant, but we still bound in linear time because if we have to, if the max changes frequently, then we're going to have many entries on this max cache. But this is this problem. This is stack with the max API. I don't even think we need to go over complexities because we know push is constant time, pop is constant time, and max is constant time. And I've already discussed the space and how this improves our best case. So there's your complexities. If you like this video, like, I like the video, what, what am I saying? If you like this video, like the video. Oh my God, I said it again. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and like this video. My goal is to make a great resource with clear explanations for these software engineering interview questions, walking you through the thought process and how you can jump from what you know to what you don't know and seeing how you can work out of these difficult situations where you might not see the optimal solution, going from problem to solution. So that is my goal with this channel. I want to create as much of an impact as possible. And yeah, that's what it's about.